Okay, now we're going to talk standard reduction potentials. And this is that list that's on the back of the AP Chem uh, periodic table. And we assign these values to each half reaction. And we can find the total potential for the cell by summing up the individual potentials for the combination of half reactions. I know it sounds hideous, it's very similar to Hess's law, so it's not usually too awful. Um, but they're always written as a redox process. So we always write it, that's why they're called standard reduction potentials. So we have to switch one of them and reverse it for the oxidation half of the reaction. And you're going to see, just like we do in Hess's law, when we reverse it, we got to switch the sign. That's exactly what I'm going to tell you to do right here. Um, one of the things that's the same as Hess's law is we will change the sign when we reverse it. One of the things that is different is with Hess's law and a lot of those summation equations, we have to multiply it by an integer. That's not the case here. We do not multiply it because cell potential is an intensive property. Now that term is thrown way back, but intensive property sim simply means that it doesn't, it's not dependent on how much is present, so we do not multiply it. Okay, so just to emphasize that point. Now this is your standard reduction potential values. This is a table 17.1 in your textbook. You also have several of them on the back of um, the AP Chem periodic table. And these are for half reactions, all of these solutions having one molar concentration and the gases being at one ATM, okay? And at 25 degrees Celsius or 298, which is our typical standard conditions, um, not standard temperature and pressure, which is going to be zero uh, degrees Celsius or 293. So all this is showing you, for example, this is when fluorine forms two fluoride ions, it's the re reaction, the reduction reaction. It's got 2.87 um, for the voltage for its differential, its cell potential. Um, here, just as a quick note, you'll notice that silver is up here. From a metal perspective, these are the non-reactive metals. And then down here, you've got the lithium, um, which is significantly active, one of the most active metals that we have. So you also can kind of use this as an activity series that we've talked about. So we'll use a lot of these, but this is where the information is. Okay, now what we do is our standard hydrogen electrode, we give a value of zero. So I come back here for a second, you'll see that hydrogen right here is what we compare everything else to. We give hydrogen zero, and then we go up or down depending on which direction it goes in. So our pl we typically use a platinum electrode because platinum is very non-reactive when we don't have a solid present and we react it with one molar hydrogen something concentrated and hydrogen gas at ATM we give it a zero and we calculate everything else by pairing it with this and measure it and like I said we're going to do an electrochemical series lab th that will hopefully help. Okay so this is our value of zero. So here is a standard hydrogen electrode, um, just to kind of give you some perspective. Here is the platinum electrode right here. We pump in the hydrogen gas, and then, for example, when we set it up with a zinc sulfate solution, and we're looking at, remember, this is the oxidation reaction. This is the reduction reaction. Okay, the next example we've got, we want to find the cell potential for the reaction. All right, so if we do that, we're going to have to use those values that we just had. And this one, we're looking at the reaction between iron 3 and copper to generate um, copper 2 and iron 2. And so the half reactions for these, you have iron 3 plus an electron to go from iron 3 to iron 2. Just as a reminder, this would be our reduction reaction. Okay, that's got a voltage of 0.77 volts. Then we've got copper um, plus two election, electrons. This is also a reduction reaction. Now we need it to be positive in order for it to work. So the second one is going to have to be reversed. So if we reverse the copper, we're going to change that to the oxidation reaction and switch it so that we get a net cell potential of 0.43 volts, okay, because it's got to be positive in order for it to be spontaneous or for it to work. Now line notation is a shorthand for describing cells. Um, we're going to put the anode on the left, the cathode is going to be on the right. We separate the anode and cathode with this double line. We separate phases in one half of reaction with a single line. And if there's no part of the half reaction has a solid, then we supplement in that platinum electrode like we saw us do for the hydrogen. And the electrons go on the far ends of the notation. Okay, so what would this be here? This would be a situation where this right here, 
um, we put the anode here so this is our oxidation reaction where the magnesium is being oxidized from magnesium solid to magnesium ion and the magnesium is the electrode or the metal the solid that's in there then on the other side of the reaction we'd have aluminum 3 and we'd have the aluminum solid um, this would be the reduction portion of the reaction where aluminum is being reduced from aluminum 3 to aluminum metal and um, again you just put the double lines between them single line represents the different states and we always have to have a solid and an aqueous one um, another one this would be an example of um, ions that involve oxidation reactions but are not have a not have a solid state so for these two we have to would have to put the platinum solid elect uh, electrode on the end we've got it separated and then we've got the manganese a uh, permanganate ion and the manganese 2 ion which again neither of them are solid so they'd have to put the platinum this would be our oxidation reaction this would be our reduction reaction and then the electrons would flow okay now galvanic cells like i said will always run where it's positive and if we have to describe a galvanic cell we should be able to write a balanced chemical reaction give the electron the direction of the electron flow assign the anode and the cathode and give the line notation okay and there's some examples right there in your book but um, all things that will do that's why you always want to put the anode on the left and the cathode on the right so if we describe this galvanic cell first of all these two half reactions we have to reverse the second one okay so here is going to be our um, net reaction where we get 0 0.03 okay so the net ionic reaction is silver plus iron 2 gives us silver solid and iron 3 and if we were to give the direction of the electron flow it's always the um, electrons will flow from the iron 2 to the silver compartment okay and that's just recognizing which direction where's the cathode where's the anode if we assign the cathode and the anode the anode is going to be the oxidation again so we've got the iron 2 going from the iron 3 um, it's going to generate the electrons the cathode is going to be the ones that need the electrons so that's why we get it to flow from the anode to the cathode okay and then this would just be a picture here where since there's no solid for the iron we had to put platinum we still put our anode which is where our oxidation reaction is going to be our cathode has our reduction and then we show our electrons we have our voltage um, and we're going to draw several of these in class but that's kind of the basics of how you would identify it okay and our line notation down here same thing you've got the solid um, you've got the two parts the anode is on the left the cathode is on the right okay and then we'll